So here's something that really surprised me as a therapist, but then it really shaped and formed a lot of the work uh, that I started to do. My name is Alma Nelson. I'm an online therapist. I help people upgrade their relationships by upgrading themselves and their relationship with themselves. So here's what I started to notice, that my clients would tell me, I said, she said, I said, she said, you know, the back and forth of a dialogue or an argument with the boss, and then I did and he did, and I, you know, the whole thing. And just more and more and more, you see the same thing. There's something totally obviously missing, right? A person could talk for hours, half hours straight, of all the details, the rundown, the whole story, everything that happened. And there's something powerfully important that's obviously missing. I'm like, what were you feeling when this was happening? And this was triggers, and this got me into the idea. You know, people have, and they don't have a sufficient decent relationship with themselves emotionally. We are out of touch with ourselves. We have been running and avoiding our own feelings um, for a long time. I think a lot of us get a message in one form or another growing up that it's not okay to feel, bad to feel, bad things will happen if you feel, you'll get hit, you'll get hurt if you have needs and wants and feelings. And it's like, all right, let me just pack it away and, and just keep it on the surface level. But people completely and totally out of touch with themselves, no relationship with themselves, no relationship with their emotions. And the issues that bring people into therapy are those very same coping mechanisms that have developed over the years through trial and error in order to help them avoid feelings. Feelings come up and I'm off to the races, drinking, drugging, avoiding, blaming, manipulating, projecting, you name it. It's all the same. It's all avoidance because in life we're either facing or we're avoiding. Sorry. Yeah, we're either facing and we're healing or we're avoiding. That's why starting to connect more with what we feel is so powerful. And I'll tell people, wait a minute. What were you feeling in that when they said that to you? It's like a blank stare. Like, I don't know. So just it's two things that are lacking over here educationally. It's yeah, first I got to realize that I'm missing what, you know emotionally what was going on with me. That's really that's why we were so triggered. But rather than tend to what we felt, we were dealing with it. But just we don't even realize that there's an us that is desperate for our attention. Number one. Number two. If even when we want to then go and connect with it, we don't have the vocabulary. We have happy, sad, angry, and then that's it. We run out. And so that's why I work with a feelings chart. Go to Google Images, search feelings chart. Pick one, pick one you like. Think about a recent intense conversation you have. Go back into it. Meditate. Contemplate. Put yourself there. The sights, the smells, the whole thing. You were there. But now ask the important question. Forget everybody. What was I feeling in that moment? And boom, you'll see it. Because we attract and are attracted to people, situations, jobs. Uh, because of the feelings that they will bring out. We even trigger ourselves. We will beat ourselves up or we will have a distorted interpretation of what's going on because it then leaves us feeling in a very familiar old way. Uh, people have told me, Nozama, can you help me? I don't have any memories of childhood, right? And that's the classic psychology. Tell me about your mother. Let's talk about the past. Yes, it's very informative. It's very helpful, but you don't have to because here's the amazing part. You aren't just one person. You're two. You're two beings, two souls, two parts, an adult part and a child part. Until you're 13, it's just that kid part absorbing all of those messages, developing those unhealthy coping mechanisms. Now, the things that bring people to therapy are unhealthy, unsuccessful, ineffective coping mechanisms trying to meet legitimate emotional needs. I need validation. I need to feel cared about, wanted, legitimate. Running around pleasing people, ignoring my feelings, not an effective approach. And so this is what we do is we start to use a feelings chart to say, what was I feeling? What was I feeling? Even if it's just a minute a day, as I'm there in the moment where I'm reflecting back an hour ago, a year ago, a week ago to an incident, what was I feeling? And like workouts, these are emotional workouts. We start to develop awareness of what we feel. We start to develop a vocabulary, really eyes on a chart and allowing the chart to give suggestions. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? It's not enough to say I was anxious. It's not enough to say I was angry, but give me more. Give me five to seven, eight, nine, ten words. What were you feeling in that moment? You start to see a lot. There's themes. It's almost communication by that inner kid part to you. That's why that very moment was so triggering. Something about it was very familiar. And so the feelings that come up for us in the moment are that same kid part. They're the same feelings. Very often, one of the meditations that we do is as we're processing a triggering moment and connecting with the feelings, putting words to those feelings, one question to ask among several contemplative questions, but one question asks is, when else have you felt that similar collection of feelings? It's good to write it down so you have it in front of you, you can look at it. Very often, boom, you know, we'll drift back. 
memory will pop up because it has the same emotions in it. We start to piece together the childhood environment we grew up in, start to piece together the ways in which we discovered as a child through trial and error to react to that, to survive it, and then fast forward, here we are as an adult still doing those same things, but on an adult level. And now all of a sudden you're actively engaged with that part, relating to that part. Working with the feelings chart is very validating, very accepting, very reassuring. It builds a relationship between you and that kid part. Um, the vocabulary starts to grow. Those words, those feeling words, start to become the ways in which you yourself talk to yourself and think about what you feel, which then automatically becomes the way in which you communicate with others. There's a lot that's there. If you're motivated, click the like, subscribe button, share with people who need this, go get yourself a feelings chart, or go to my website, zalmanelson.com. You can find Google Images feelings chart and start today. What were you feeling in that most recent argument? Not just what you said and the other person said. I know there's such like a pleasure that it's just like, oh, I thought about the best thing I could have said in that argument, you know, after the argument is over. Yes, I get it, but it's missing the point. What were you feeling? That's why it was so intense. And then if you do that enough times consistently, regularly, you'll find in similar situations in the future, you're inoculated, you're calm, you're free. You don't take it personally. You see the other person is really struggling have an issue, but it doesn't bother you as much because you've already connected with those feelings. Keep me posted. Use the comments. Talk more soon.